Hi everybody, it's Rob Jersey from OneCloudX. I'm excited to bring to you today some new functionality NetSuite has released in the 2021.1 um, edition pertaining to MRP um, and how that works um, for a manufacturing organization or an organization that needs to manage their, their materials um, when they have multiple um, warehouses and multiple uh, sub-assemblies for, for products in the manufacturing process. Um, and need to have that level of planning. So they've just released a, a new functionality that, that provides that, and I'd like to show you that today. Um, so if you if you jump into your environment, if you've got work orders and assemblies as an actual module, uh, if you jump into the enable features, the so setup company enable features, under the invent items and inventory tab, if you go down under the inventory section, you'll notice that there is actually a feature now available called material requirement planning. And when you actually select this button, in addition to your, um, you know, your demand planning and supply planning elements, which is that one there, your actual products will now have the ability to select MRP and mass production schedule in the actual um, in the planning method. So if I go in and back to the supply planning manager to now show you how this works, I'll jump into an actual product where I've I've set this up. So if I jump into an actual product called 250705, which is an assembly product, um, which is an item assembly, sorry, I've jumped into demand plan instead, um, so which is an assembly product, there's the image of the product. If I go down to the, invent, uh, the purchasing and inventory tab, you will notice that under the planning method, replenishment method, there is now an MRP materials requirement planning selection now available in addition to what you previously seen being reorder point in time phase. And you see there's also mass production schedule in one as well. In addition to that, you now also have something called a planning item category that now enables you to group particular items based on the replenishment planning method um, and, and categorizing those. So for instance, this product is now connected to the um, planning item category MLUX. So I'm actually grouping those item categories together in order to generate a requirements plan MRP for that um, instead of having to run it for everything. So, so when, when I've set this product up, I'll actually take you to the assembly um, and the, uh, the bill of materials for that particular product. You will see that these are the actual components that are tied to that particular bill of materials. So you'll see there's a number here that are all either sourced through stock or these other three here that actually have sub-assemblies tied to them. In this case, there's three sub-assemblies. And as part of that sub-assembly, I have gone in and actually made them uh, MRP specific as well, where I flagged the item and the replenishment method to have MRP. All right, so now the next part of the process is, like I said, you categorize them. And in NetSuite, you now have these features. If I go inventory, supply planning, you'll see there's item categories, there's item groups, and there's planning um, rule groups as well. So the item categories, the planning item categories, I've just created MLUX. And that's where I'm actually um, assigned those to particular products. Once I've created that, I then assign them to a particular item group if I want to group them together, um, which if I jump in, you'll be able to see. Um, that I've connected the, the planning item category MLUX to it, but also have the ability to, to select items here as well and bring particular items as part of that item group in addition to having the item category assigned to it so I can go and choose the item as well and choose whatever products as part that you'd like to select that are of that plan, uh, replenishment method MRP. And then lastly, you set up your rule groups where for any items that um, are not procured from a supplier or not manufactured, you go in here and actually set that up so they're sourced from a transfer instead. So you may have particular item or item categories that are sourcing the stock um, from a particular source location and supplied into the location you want to in the MRP process. So this is, like I said, you know, in the event where you're actually procuring or, or not making it. If I now then jump back into it, so there are your three categories and groups that you set up initially. And then these, these other areas here, which is refresh planning repository, uh, supply plan definitions, and the actual logs. So this repository is where you're actually generating in the background all the elements tied to um, 
generating um, from, a, from a demand planning. So it goes and gets all the demand plan, it goes and gets all the requirements, it goes and gets and looks at all the inventory and does all that sort of stuff and creates a repository for it. And you can generate that repository based on a complete refresh or a neat refresh of particular items um, or item groups. Um, and then once you've done that, what happens is it actually therefore goes and um, if we look at one example of an event log, you'll go, you'll see where I've run it previously. It's actually run it for these particular items and generated for those items. Once you've done that, the next part is to go and deliver and complete the supply plan definitions. So this is where once you've gone and done the repository, you're now from that repository generating the MRP from it where you're jumping into the supply plan definition and you're launching it. Once you've launched it, I've just clicked it, it goes in the background and actually generates the MRP process. So you see it's initializing at the moment, you refresh, and then you'll see that uh, the percentage complete when it gets to 100, we'll have the facility to view those results in the planning workbench. So this planning workbench is a supply planning workbench. I think it's been around now for the last two or three releases. Um, and you can see you have the ability to filter based on replenishment methods, whether it's an MRP or mass production schedule. And then you can also filter based on the item categories, particular items and locations as well. And then over here, you have other filters in terms of message and order filter types. Now, when you generate an MRP in this example, it will give you action types and exception types for you to review where particular orders may need to be replanned as an example. Um, but in this case, 257, 250705 product I showed you has these particular products that are connected to it um, that are part of the MRP. Um, and I can go in and look at for every one of those what the, um, what the, the, um, the, the demand is, what the um, um, available balances are, what the stock levels look like for each and every period. In this case, it's uh, it's daily cycles. If I go across, I'll be able to see in this case, there's 456 of the demand forecast um, in play. Um, therefore, when you take into account the, uh, the available projected balance and the adjusted balance, what does that look like? So, so that's now in there. And if I keep going across, you'll be able to see that it gives you visibility on on hand, on order, um, are there any action items or exceptions in a review? Um, and over here, you've, you've got these planned supply pl um, orders that have been created and also what the demand looks like in terms of how it's generated those supply orders based on that demand. So if I just click on, on one of these, you, I will be able to see that the um, demand has come from these particular um, demand plans. So it's the same demand plan over three months worth. Um, and I can click and jump into that demand plan and have a look at it. And you can see it's been generated using moving average, using 12 months of historical history to drive what the actual demand is for those particular monthly periods. So that's how it's, it's, it's actually defined the demand plan and what demand is for that particular 250705 product. And then you've also got the actual supply. So based on that demand, using the actual stock on hand quantity of 21, what is it suggesting in terms of um, needing to be played incorporating any current orders that are there? So for example, there's this current work order 86 that's in there. It's been firmed up for a quantity of four, five, six, as well as there are as there is another firmed order, a planned work order that's been firmed that can get converted into an actual work order. Um, for, for, for scheduling and, and production. So, so this plan work order is not actually a work order. It's, it's basically a new record that NetSuite's created um, that doesn't flood your, your, your scheduling when it comes to, to work order. So it's just a, a plan work order that is in a particular, um, whether it's in a, in a release state or in a planning state, that then gets converted into an actual work order. The same goes for, for purchase orders as well. There is now a planned purchase order um, that is now an actual transaction in NetSuite um, that is used for MRP. So once you've selected, um, you're happy to proceed. Basically, you click and say, yep, in this example, I, I agree we need 45 of those, incorporating um, what the demand looks like, um, whilst reviewing any exceptions that, you've might, that you might have as well. Um, so let me just go back. I can show you one over here that actually has exceptions in it um, and actions. 
So in this case, the action is that you need to reschedule um, this planned purchase order as it's nearing its uh, lead time threshold. Um, and you build these thresholds into the system and these rules into the system that then flags to you to say, we need to action certain elements based on, uh, based on these exceptions and actions. Um, so once you're happy to proceed, um, you can therefore go in and say, okay, I want to, uh, I agree that this particular planned purchase order needs to happen for this product. I, I agree that there needs to be a planned work order needs to happen for this product. And then you release these actual orders, right? So once you've released them, um, they run in the, in the background. And then from then you should be able to see them in the item to orders page or the mass um, Cre uh, work order creation page. So if I jump into um, the, let's use the, um, the items to order page, right, which is in my reminders, I click on it, and then I'll be able to see in the uh, plan order section, which is a new sub tab, in addition to time phase and reorder points, I should be able to see the actual plan orders that then I can um, execute on and, uh, and, and order on. Um, so in this case, I need to choose a, an actual vendor. And once I've chosen that vendor, um, because there isn't one actually on the file, um, I should be able to submit and actually create that purchase order. And the same thing goes on to the, uh, same thing goes on the mass create work orders function. We're actually on creating um, and converting these um, work or these planned orders into actual work orders. The same thing, selecting and planning it. That then enables the actual process around the, um, the scheduling completing element of of, um, of 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 manufacturing work orders. So, so that gives you a bit of uh, you know a rundown as to how um, NetSuite's um, MRP solution works. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please, please reach out. I'm um, happy to give you a demo as well. So thanks again and uh, have a great day.